Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. It is Friday evening, about uh, 640 here at night, and uh, we've got a doozy of a storm that could be brewing potential for next week. And uh, uh, earlier it was showing snow for us. If you followed me on the Facebook page, you notice that now uh, we're looking at the potential for some uh, icy precipitation maybe out of it. We're still several days away, and lots can change, but we'll talk about the data tonight and along with what to expect for this weekend as well, all right? Again, tonight's uh, video update sponsored by High Voltage Mobile DJ Services, and you can contact Nathan at 630-9465. Visit them on the web at djhighvoltage.com. They do a great uh, job with their DJ service, so uh, tell them Southern Indiana Weather sent you. Okay. Here is why, just as an illustration, we don't want to get too excited about next week's storm just yet. Um, lots can change. We've been posting about this for a few days. My philosophy on this is it's better to uh, inform you guys far in advance what's going to go on rather than all of a sudden, <clears throat> two or three days out from the event, oh, we got a winter storm coming, and well, where the heck did this come from? Why didn't... Uh, you know, why didn't anybody mention it? And, uh, and of course, in the day and age here, we have social media, uh, things just go, get exploded all over the Internet. And uh, even though we, as meteorologists, can say one thing, sometimes it gets interpreted a different way. So I know there's a lot of worries about next week's storms. I get it. I completely understand. I want to go through the data tonight and talk about it in a very rational way and just sort of give you some realistic expectations, talk about what we do know and what we don't know. Unfortunately, what we don't know is a lot right now, and here's the reason why. See this little blob over here, uh, just now coming on to the uh, East Coast satellite here, and uh, this is actually our storm system that will be coming in on Tuesday and lasting through Wednesday. Uh, this is what's going to cause our big problems. I've layered the jet stream over it as well, so uh, essentially what you're going to have over the next few days is uh, this low pressure having a direct conduit for us sort of follows the jet stream down like this and then takes the jet stream will sort of funnel it right over us and uh, the exact track of that low as it positions itself over us is going to determine I exactly what we get it's very near impossible right now at this point in time to discern, determine the exact track of that low and uh, well it's, it's not even on shore yet uh, out here over the ocean, we have a very limited amount of weather information that we can say we can get our info from satellite. There are a few weather buoys out there that we can get some information from, but once it lands over here in the United States, then we can actually send up weather balloons into it and sample the storm, and we've got all kinds of data points on the surface that the storm will move over that we can sample that storm with. We'll have a lot better information to input into our models. That'll give us a lot better picture of what's going on. As I said, uh, these models will waffle back and forth a lot over time, and uh, that's exactly what you're seeing. Let me just go ahead and pull this up. What this is is the last eight model runs of the GFS, and uh, I'm going to use the GFS primarily on this because it does determine precipitation type, and that's incredibly helpful to me, I think. So let me make this as big as we possibly can <clears throat> and sort of show you what's going on. This was the 7 a.m. run this morning. I don't have the, the uh, 1 p.m. run pulled up. It's not a whole lot different. Uh, but this goes all the way back through um, the, really the, uh, the last couple of days worth of runs. It's run four times in a day. All right, so you notice the low is actually tracking very close to the Ohio River. And really it is in all of these. Some of these don't paint the low because it's not deepened enough. Uh, for that yet as some of these do but you notice uh, every every one of them is a little bit different but you notice a lot of similarities now this one for most for southern indiana would bring us all rain at this particular snapshot in time and it starts out as all rain and then goes to some very light on the back side of the freezing rain on the back side of the system this one uh, it, it's a little bit further to uh, the east and the track is a little bit different so again the battle lines are drawn clearly through us this one is a little bit further east yet, and so the battle lines are clearly over us. We don't get any rain out of this one. It starts off as all freezing rain. The pink is what you see in the freezing rain, and the orange is the sleet snow up here, and the purple and the green, of course, is rain. This one, again, it tracks more in this fashion, so it gives us sort of a mix in between. And again, you go on on this, mostly rain, mostly freezing rain. Uh, this one tracks so far south that it's a mix between freezing rain and even snow at this point. Very close to us, so the battle lines are drawn. What can you say? Well, <coughs> excuse me. What it can show us is that right now we don't have a handle on this situation completely yet, and that's okay. What it can also show us is that um, 
Well, well, let's put it this way. As a meteorologist, what I'm looking for are trends and trends and patterns. What is the trend that you see in this? Well, back and forth between rain and ice, rain and ice, rain and ice. And some of the model runs show pretty much all rain for us. Some of them show a mix. Some of them show all, all freezing rain and sleet for us. Um, so basically what that communicates to me is rather than a snow threat now, uh, it looks like the freezing rain and rain line, wherever that line sets up and changes over, is going to set up right in our area. So that means some of us may end up staying a mostly rain event. Some of us may end up staying a mostly freezing rain event, and that's really going to suck for whoever gets mostly freezing rain out of this. And then in this model, I don't show you this, but on the back side of the system, then you end up with a little bit of snow. So this is not a pleasant scenario no matter how you cut it. And uh, let me, I'll show you that here in a second. Let me... Let me get to the right page here. Here's the GFS, and uh, there's our storm system right now getting ready to come on shore. Let me take this forward in time, and here we go by Tuesday evening. And you can see this is the, the model run from this morning of the GFS. You can see how it sort of cuts that low fairly near the Ohio River, so that would favor a, a rain set up for uh, parts of southern Indiana closer to Louisville. Parts of southern Indiana closer towards Evansville, that would favor more of a freezing rain type of setup. So, again, the, the margin for error of this is, is going to be um, is, is going to be minimal, and uh, uh, a small shift in the track one way or the other is really going to completely change the precipitation type for some of us. All right, you can see this then moves out on the back side of this. Uh, we would get some snow. If we take a look at actual precipitation type, uh, this is a bigger version of the, this particular run right here in the corner. All right, and You can see, if I just back this up as the low comes into us, it starts off as all rain for most of us in southern Indiana, but then very quickly it transitions as the low moves out uh, into this. And uh, some of the other models, again, the ones that take the low uh, more in a fashion like this rather than uh, this one, which sort of takes the low in a fashion like this, the ones that take the low in a fashion like this really favor more of a freezing rain threat for here, and, and the heavier snow threat stays up here in northern Indiana, really, on all of these runs. So right now, it doesn't look like a heavy snow threat for us. Again, this can change. This is Friday. We've still got Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to go before this affects us on Tuesday afternoon and into the evening and overnight hours. So we've still got some time to work this thing out, and with the system not on shore, there's no way to know 100% sure, but what I can is just show you the data as we have it right now, and it's not pretty, uh, because no matter whether you believe whether whether this works out or whether um, the more freezing rain works out, it's not going to be pleasant for whoever sets it up. It's only a question, I think, at this point, of who is going to end up with that freezing precipitation and uh, where that sets up, and it's going to set up. Uh, the ones closest to the low pressure are going to get rain, but those who are away from it just a little bit are going to start that transition. And uh, it looks like at this point it's going to set up over our area, which is certainly not a good thing. How much freezing rain? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, fighting a little bit of a cold here. How much freezing rain could we talk about? Well, a fair good, fairly good amount of freezing rain, especially for northern parts of Indiana, um, central parts of Indiana, I should say. Down here, light freezing rain, at least in this particular run. But again, if I were to show you this graphic over time, this is waffled back and forth, and it depends on how much rain we get versus that. Remember, this was a mostly rain type of setup for us at the start. The ones that favored a mostly uh, a freezing rain setup give us these brighter pinks. So, you know, we could be looking at, oh, a hundredth of an inch all the way up to a tenth or even a quarter inch of ice. Really, and nothing's out of the question with this as far as, as this is concerned yet. We'll have to see. And then on the back side of the system, we've got some snow to work with. It does look like... Now, bear in mind, they're going to get some snow up there tonight and tomorrow in northern Indiana. So, really, this is accumulated precipitation over time. So, northern Indiana is going to get buried in snow, uh, not only with this weekend storm, but with the storm coming in on Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Notice it, it burns us with very minimal amounts of snow down here. Uh, still has, uh, you know, even up here uh, towards uh, the Bedford area, it starts to get some heavier snow. So, maybe from Bedford north in this run, you get some fairly decent snowfall out of this. So somebody in our area is going to get some snow on the back side of the system. Again, who it is is in question. If I showed you the Canadian as well, I just want you to see this, that it's a very similar theme. Uh, really, the Canadian, the GFS, and the Euro are all lining up nicely in some areas. And uh, the areas they are lining up nicely is are, are pointing the heavier precip to the, to the uh, north of us. 
This little preset badge you see to the south is actually going to come on Monday night, so that's not part of the system on Tuesday. That won't be affecting us. That's going to affect Kentucky and Point South. All right. <clears throat> but you can see it gives us some very minor amounts of snow with the, with the Canadian as well. And uh, I don't have the euro pulled up, but if I were to show you the euro, you'd see a, a very similar thing with the euro. So there's pretty decent model agreement in some areas now that it looks like it's less of a snow threat for us, more of a heavy snow threat for northern and, and central Indiana and points to the north, and more of a icy precipitation. So that's something that we have definitely got to watch. Temperature-wise, it'll certainly be cold enough, but then we've got to watch as far as the how goes. Uh, with, with this model run today, we started out at 25 on Tuesday morning, but then very quickly we go into the mid-30s, so that's certainly a, not a freezing rain threat there. But then as we come in through the night, we dip back out into the 20s again. <clears throat> if it's still warm enough in the upper atmospheres to do that freezing rain, we can get a little bit of, of frozen precipitation still here. It's most certainly possible. The Canadian is a little bit cooler with its temperatures as well. You see it's cooler to start here and then uh, it actually warms us up a little bit more than the GFS does and uh, hangs us there for a while but then very quickly cools us down as well so again the idea here is either one of these models could bring us a freezing rain threat they don't look like a strong freezing rain threat for the extreme portions of southern Indiana um, but certainly uh, for portions of our area it, it's going to be there um, that's that's really about all we can say for it at this point okay let me take you back out real quick and just focus on our snow chances. Uh, well, our rain chances. I should, I'm so used to saying snow because it's been so cold. It is nice to just see some rain this weekend, isn't it? Snow looks to stay to our north. Here we are this evening, and uh, the future radar is indicating just some spotty showers around tonight. Nothing really to write home about. Really only a small chance of that. Heavier rain starts to move in. Here we are later in the afternoon on Saturday, and we get a fairly decent line that moves in, and then that's pretty quickly gone by the time Sunday comes. And as we move through some time, you see some wintry precipitation start to come in on Monday, and that's that heavier snow swath down to our south that I showed you. So this doesn't look like it's going to be a huge rain event for us, but it certainly looks like it's something that we are going to be able to see. Now remember that you can track the rain as it moves in right on our webpage. If you go to southernindianaweather.com and you just go up here and click on interactive radar, We've got a great interactive radar product for you that you can choose. And uh, you can, if I zoom it out here, we don't have any snow around us at the moment, but you do have some in northern Indiana. It looks like there may be a few light sprinkles out there, but you can use this to track the rain as it comes in. Even the freezing rain and snow as it comes in, it'll color it uh, by different precipitation types for you. So that's available for you. Also on southernindianaweather.com, don't forget to check out our forecast. I forecasted 44 today. We actually made it to 45, but I don't mind missing it if it's, if it's a little bit warmer because the, the warmer weather was really welcomed. Uh, scattered rain showers, we didn't have a whole lot of that, but uh, it, you know, really uh, tonight is not going to be that strong. Uh, the, the latest trends, I wouldn't even keep us at a 50% chance overnight. I would take that more down to a 30% chance. And we're not going to go very far tonight, really into the upper 30s. Potentially breaking the 50 mark tomorrow. That's not bad. Rain, especially in the afternoon times, doesn't look like a steady rain all day. Just a, a line of some uh, some scattered showers, then followed by a line. Nothing severe by any means. But then Sunday, the temperatures really plummet, going down into the 30s for Sunday and Monday. And then next week, there you've got that mess to deal with. Up to 35 on Tuesday is what I'm forecasting. Wintery mix of sleet, freezing rain, and snow potentially in there. I do think some snow and ice accumulation is possible. The exact amounts are in question very much at this point. And then on Wednesday, we may see on the back side of this system the potential for a little bit of snow with highs in the upper 20s. So, uh, and then, of course, the temperature bottoms out after that, only a high of 18 on Thursday. So enjoy the brief reprieve tomorrow, especially as we warm up into the 50s while you can because, frankly, folks, it's going to be ridiculously cold. All right, one thing I want to mention to you real quick that we are excited about here uh, at Southern Indiana Weather. Uh, we have formed a new media partnership with uh, DC Broadcasting Incorporated. And uh, so starting next week, you will be able to hear our forecasts on the radio on WBDC 101 Country. For those of you in the Dubois County area and then surrounding areas that get that, I know it reaches out a pretty good distance. And on 103.3 The Fix as well. So if you listen to either of those stations, uh, make sure you tune in. Uh, um, through the mornings next week, you'll be able to hear uh, some forecasts. So it's, it's an exciting partnership. Uh, you can go to our, our Facebook page and you can see the links over to their page as well. So 
uh, please make sure that you uh, go like their page and return the love to them. And we're excited to have this partnership working with them. All right, folks, that's it for now. We've got a lot to talk about in coming days, but we will have more of these video updates. For Southern Indiana Weather, I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great night, folks.